Grab your riser. Make sure your riser is handy. Here's what we're going to be building, guys, in Revit. Just a quick reminder, um, so you can, um, if you don't have your riser handy, we will be bringing power from a transformer into a CT cabinet. From the CT cabinet, we're going to take it directly into inside my building uh, to an auto transfer switch right here. And also we have a generator that's going to bring the power to the auto transfer switch. From the auto transfer switch, Adam, what we're going to be doing is we're going to bring the um, from the auto transfer switch to the main panel, from the main panel to receptacle and lighting panels. That's what we're going to be building in Revit. Cool? Um, please have handy the following. Um, this is the design build. This is what we're going to be doing at SKM, guys. We're going to be building a one-line diagram. Uh, we're going to do a short circuit calculation. We're going to all this information you guys will be printing from Revit, uh, from uh, SKM. Uh, we will build the one-line diagram. We will run a short circuit calculation. We will input all the information into the model. Uh, you will, uh, we will do a load flow report. You guys will do a load flow report. Um, we will do a coordination curves for uh, CU1, CU2, as well as air handling unit, and we will do an arc flash label. Can you guys see that? Everybody see what we're trying to achieve here? We're trying to do short circuit calculation, load flow, arc flash, as well as coordination from this software. So the step number one, gentlemen and ladies, that we're going to be doing, step number one will be to build the one-line diagram. Cool? Um, so let's go ahead and um, and fire SKM, P, SKM, and I hope um, you guys have yours handy. Okay, so you see the icon here at the bottom, guys? Go ahead and start it. So let's go ahead and start. Give me a thumbs up when, when it's up and running, please, so I know. Cool. Everybody's good. Okay, good, 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 Brian, we're in? Yes or no? Possibility, okay. SKM. Uh, Karen, good? Okay. Now, when you, I don't know what you guys open to default to, go to project, please. Click on project from the get-go. This is how you open. It should open something like this. I would like you guys to go project and hit new. Okay, call this project. Are you working on it? Is that firing? Yeah. Okay. So uh, hit call it commercial. Commercial project. That's the first thing you need to do. And 2013. This is your commercial project 2013. And please go ahead and put it on the network uh, desktop. Uh, go to desktop and go to your team folder. And all the way to your team folder and put it in the network. When you go there, go to commercial project and go to under, um, it should be uh, power system analysis. Can you guys see that? Power system analysis and dump it right there. Can you guys see the lead that you need to do? In your team folder, obviously in the commercial project, power system analysis, everybody's there? That's where I would like it to be so I can look at it. Okay, so save. Everybody's good? Got the lead? Save it. Now you have just started a new project. That's how you start this software. Like any other Microsoft product, guys, you start by opening a file or a, or a project. Cool? Everybody's good? Start a new one? Okay. Now you will have two windows, guys, like these. One window is called Component Editor, and the other window is called The Line or The One Line. Um, do you have, you don't have any, any of these? I've got the component Okay, can you like move it, minimize it like this and see if you... Well, I have that, but I don't have the, the one line. The, the one line? Okay. How many of you guys don't have the one line? Everybody has the one line, so that's what we're going to be working. Okay, let me Okay. All right. So let's go ahead. Everybody, can you guys expand the one-line diagram? Give me thumbs up when you're ready here. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now we're gonna go build our one-line diagram, guys. We're gonna go build our one-line diagram. When we build our one-line diagram, um, we will we have. Uh, I need a few things for you. 
we have a 500 kVA transformer, 500 amp. Um, so what I would like you guys to go, the first thing you need to do when you build, we're going to build the riser, is we're going to start with Excel Energy. Where does Excel? The source of the power. The source of the power, can you guys see the U here at the top? This is how you build the model. Okay, everybody can see C stands for U. Click on U. You are holding a utility in your hand. And just go drop it anywhere. Now you have just got a utility. You can zoom in it, guys. Can you see that you can zoom into it? Okay. All right. Everybody's good with that? Okay. Now I need to bring the utility into my... Uh, so this is the this is like the transformer. Okay. I need a cable to go from the utility. Can you guys see that? From the utility into my CT cabinet. Click on cable. Can you guys see that? And go, do you see these little um, little circles here? Make sure they overlap. Everybody can see these little circles at the end of that cable. Make sure they overlap with, with each other and click. Now you have just connected as cable to the utility. What you have done, gentlemen, you have just created bring a utility is a service point that's excel okay you have just created a service point um and you brought a cable any question is about this one the service point did you guys click it click on it okay now i want to now i am uh, i'm where i brought the cable i need to go to the ct cabinet cool ct cabinet a ct cabinet this is this adam this is one something like you have to understand Every time you have a panel, it's called a bus. Can you guys, can I get you to understand a panel, a bus? Okay. When you need a panel, it's called a bus. Okay. Can you guys see that little line here? That line is, is called the bus. Click on it. Now you're holding in your hand so-called bus as well as panel. Can you guys see it right here? Now go and slam it against the cable and it will connect to it. See how easy that is? Then you can expand them. Click on them and look at how you can expand them. When you, and you can uh, um, expand them a little bit. So now, look at that. You can move them. Can you guys see you can maneuver them? Click on them, move them, maneuver them, make them uh, nicer, um, expand them a little bit. Do you see that little dot here? That little dot, guys, if you hover over it, look at this, and pick it up, you can actually move it up slightly, adjust it. I need thumbs up, Chad. We have utility, we have a cable, and we want to the meter. Um, meter uh, uh, center. Now, before we go further, guys, <clears throat> let's go ahead and name, shall we? Let's go ahead and name. Um, can you guys go to that to the name? Not that. The, double click on the words. The, the the name. Can you guys see that? If you double click on the fixture, it will open this. Don't do that. So you see that little. This is the most confusing part. If you are here to close it, don't go to the red one. Go to that little one underneath it. <laughs> You know how many times drove me nuts when I was working on it? So go close right here. So, for example, you accidentally double-click on this one. It'll open the something called component editor. That's where you put information in it. Made this mistake, no problem. See that little lower X, not upper X. Upper X will shut down the program. Uh, the lower X and exit. Okay, now click on the text, only the text. Let's call this is Excel. It's called, this is Excel Energy, my utility. Okay, Did you guys name it Excel Energy. This is coming from Excel Energy. The cable, this cable, I want to double click. Before I go to the cable, I want to go to the bus, double click on the bus. This is uh, meter center, meter center MC. Uh, but before MC, guys, can you put a B dash MC? B is a bus. Always put it a B for a bus. B dash MC. This is the bus that re represents the MC, which is the meter center. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Go to the cable. Now, Derek, where do you think I'm going to name this cable? I'm going to name it by the destination. What's the destination of this cable? MC. So double click on it. Keep the hyphen and, and call it um, uh, MC. So it will be CBL, which is cable, MC. So every time you see this, CBL will tell you it's a cable, and MC will tell you the destination of this cable is what? The destination of this cable is MC. Does that make sense? So important, guys, to name them unique names, because remember, you are going to be looking at them later on. 
Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We did that? Okay, cool. Now, um, I'm going to go expand. Can you guys, if you hover over the boss, right when you hover over the edge, do you see these double arrows like this? You grab it and expand. You can expand it if you want to make it bigger, or you can make it smaller. Make it slightly bigger like mine here. Uh, you can adjust where the text is going to be located to make it nicer. Okay, now, we went to the MC Meter Center. From the MC, Karen, we're going to go grab another cable. And let's look at the second cable. I'm attaching it to the MC. Where do, where do they go after the MC, guys? Where do they go from the MC to where? Anybody? We went from the transformer into the MC, from the MC to the auto transfer switch. So for the auto transfer switch, can you guys see that right here? This is, it says new auto transfer switch. Everybody can see that? New auto transfer switch, yes sir. What's the purpose of having the, uh, the MC bus? Is it just the, uh, the value, the yep, the absolutely. And the arc flash and what's not. Okay. okay, so a new auto transfer switch. Everybody can see that? Click on that baby. Now you are holding an auto transfer switch in your hand. Click it here. It's it's right here. It's new auto transfer switch. Can you guys see that? Right here. Looks like an auto transfer switch. Cool. Everybody get that? Now drop it right underneath. Don't connect it to anything else. <clears throat> um, now, do you guys see the cable that we dropped? Did you guys drop that? The cable that we dropped. Go from that cable and make it attached to, can, before we go, do you see the auto transfer switch has normal emergency? Can you guys see that? So I'm going to go drag this cable and make it touch the normal. Look at this, not the emergency. Touch the normal, not the emergency. Touch the normal. So overlap these two circles. Everybody can see that? Overlap them. Now I connected, gentlemen, my cable to the normal side of the, uh, uh, to the normal side of the auto transfer switch. Can I have thumbs up with everybody's there? <coughs> yes, no? Karen, good? I need a feedback, guys. Yes? So you can direct, if you made a mistake, made a mistake, look what how easy, right click on it, and do you see the word disconnect? Look at this, guys. Right click on it, disconnect. Now it's the cable is disconnected. I'm going to go back, connect it, make it touch the bus. It will connect to it, make it touch the normal. Here will connect. So here's my uh, auto transfer switch normal. Cool. Okay. Now moving to Revit, guys. From the other side of the auto transfer switch, I brought a generator. So can you just see where it says synchronous generator here? Everybody can see that? And new synchronous generator. Everybody can see that. Click on a generator. Put your generator here. Right G for generator right here. New synchronous generator. Grab a cable and attach the cable to your generator from one side. From the other side, Adam, zoom and go all the way to the emergency side. Now, gentlemen, I have just created um, uh, a feeder from the emergency side, uh, from the generator. Can you guys see that? Generator. I'm gonna go name it, same. You guys, am I going too fast? Everybody has these? Okay. I'm gonna go start naming next. Click on it. Zoom, zoom in and out a couple of times. Yeah, it will disappear. Yeah, that's just, uh, it's not uh, refreshed. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's gear, when you guys, very easy. Made a mistake, any one of these. Same, I made a mistake with this generator and I, we need to get rid of it. Um, anybody have been in the army here? No, nobody's in the army or any military. Uh, you have to believe in the word destroy here. <laughs> Believe uh, even if you are a triager. Um, so if you want to de delete something, guys, you don't delete it. You have to destroy it. Right click on it 
if I want to delete this one, and it says, do you see the word destroy? That's the one I'm going to hit. Don't hit it. Destroy will completely eliminate that, that uh, component from your system. Cool? We don't want to do that, of course. All right, so let's go name. I'm going to go click on the name of Jen. I'm going to call it Jen, just Jen. It's only one Jen, so I'm going to call it Jen. Get rid of that one. Um, cable, coming from the cable. Um, I'm going to call the cable here Jen. Cable Jen, G-E-N, which is the source of this cable is the generator. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to call this cable. Can you see the cable coming from the generator? The cable coming from the utility, let's call it um, utility. Utility. The one that's coming from the utility, call it utility. So that's coming from the generator to the auto transfer switch from the generator. Uh, the auto transfer switch, get rid of that and just make it, uh, let's call it auto, oops, double click on the name and call it auto transfer switch. That's what we named it. Only one auto transfer switch. So I named it. So the, you're building your riser, they call it, uh, or one line diagram, guys. You're building a one line diagram. Can you guys see that? You can make it look nicer, Adam. So you can grab all this stuff here look at that group them and hover over them move them all the way up to this side you look at the, the line now is screwed up i can move that line slightly up to here i can adjust this slightly you know what i mean you can make it look nicer and what's not okay i need everybody to be at this point cool now we're going to take one more cable and go to the main panel cool guys main panel i want to go grab my cable adam right here I want to attach my cable to the auto transfer switch um, right here to the bottom of the auto transfer switch. And from here, I'm going to go grab a bus and attach that bus. The bus is that one here and attach it to the bottom of this cable. And I'm going to go readjust them so they can they don't overlap right here. I'm going to name this bus, guys. Double click on it. I'm going to call it main panel. And the cable above it, I'm going to name this cable the same thing, dash main panel. Now I have, I have just brought a cable into my main panel. Everybody got that? Cable into my main panel. Cool. See how easy that is? Now in the, we are in the main panel. Now if you guys, if you guys, uh, um, Remember, what we're trying to do is here. We're trying to build this system here. So here's my main panel. We brought two feeders to it. So this is, our, I'm sorry, auto transfer switch. We came from auto transfer switch to the main panel. Now you can imagine where we're going to go, right? We're going to the other two panels. Okay, so let's go, do me a favor. Expand that bus. Expand it by hovering over the edge. Expand it. See what I did, guys? I expanded it. I need to take one more feeder, Adam. Here's my feeder. And I'm going to go grab a bus at the bottom here. And anybody can guess what this bus would be? This is going to be my lighting panel. And the cable above it will be my lighting control panel, my lighting um, LP. So cable going to LP. I'm going to go grab one more cable, attach it. One more bus, attach it here. And I'm repeating myself, guys, here. And I'm going to call this one, this B. Oops, I should have kept the B, though. B dash um, receptacle panel for bus. I would like you guys to keep the Bs here for the name. I'm sorry. Uh, can you guys keep the B for bus? I like the B. B for bus main panel. Bus main panel. Just go back and just be put B. B lighting panel. And the cable is going to be a receptacle panel, uh, RP. Oops, RP. Gentlemen, you have just built your riser. See how easy that is? <laughs> you built your riser. You can adjust it. Adam, look at this. is kind of uh, goofy a little bit. We're going to go adjust it slightly. Um, so here's your riser. Any comments, guys? Any questions? That's your riser.
a what? Uh, there's no mechanical main panel. There's main panel right here. Yeah, but B dash MP. Yep. Can you guys give me a thumbs up when you're done with building it similar to this? Building it similar to this? Animal good? Okay. Uh, Brian? Yes, no? Matt? Good. Derek? Need more time? Yes, no? Karen? Need more time? We're good? Okay. This is your riser. Done. Done with the riser. Now, the next th thing, any question about building it, guys? Made a mistake? Made a mistake? No problem. Click. When you highlight, you want to move the whole thing, look what you can highlight it like from top, you box it in and hover over it until you see, uh, what is, can you guys see that little cross deal here? Then you can move it. Can you guys see how you can move all of it together? Um, I want to move this section only, just this section, hover over it, uh, select it, you can move it here. Can you guys see the, how the system works, maneuvering it, adjusting it to look nice, right? Grouping it together. Okay, now these are, this is your riser. Now we need to add to your riser a few things. Any question about adding a riser? Now, Adam, if I have 100 panels, what do you do? You keep doing the same thing. Bus, cable, bus, cable, bus, cable, generator. If you have 100 generators, generator, cable, to that auto transfer switch or, or not. Now, what I would like you guys to do is we're going to go add load to the buses. We're going to add load to the bus. So I'm going to start by, <clears throat> um, I'm going to go to my lighting panel calculation and see how much, here's my lighting panel. You guys came up with this lighting load. Uh, let's, you, let's see how much load we we came up with. Um, I'm going to do it slightly differently this time. With load calculation, when you guys did your load calc, total demand load, um, volt amp right here, the volt amp, if you go all the way to right here, this is how much volt amp my lighting panel has. Lighting panel is right here. My lighting panel has 69, shall we say 69, gentlemen? 69 kVA. Everybody can see that? That's from lighting calculation, 69 kVA. The size of my panel is 200 amp and 69 kVA. Everybody, 68.7, make it 69. Can you have thumbs up, Chab? We understand where this came from. 69 kV. Okay, minimize it. I would like you guys to zoom into the load here. And do you see the L that says load here? Non, no non-motor load. Everybody can see that. No non-motor load. Click on it and attach it to the attach this one to to the uh, lighting panel. <clears throat> And please name it, name it, um, this is going to be LP, LP, that's my panel, my the load for my panel. Can you see that? That's my LP. That's the load. Everybody get that? Now do me a favor, click, double click on the icon itself, not the name, the icon itself, double click on it. Do you guys see the KVA here? Rated size KVA for this lighting panel. What did we say, Adam? It's going to be 69, 69 kVA. Everybody got that? Don't worry about the voltage yet. 69 kVA. Everybody got that? Click on it. No, how do you get out of it? Do not go to the red. <laughs> go to that little button right underneath it. I can't emphasize. Right here. Don't go to the red one. Go to the one underneath it and click. It will save it automatically, Adam. Okay? You want to make sure that you did the same, the right thing, Karen. Double click on the icon itself. It still say 69 kVA. Get rid of it by this little close X, not a big one. You go back to your riser. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, when everybody's there? Yes, no. Good. Let's go do the receptacle panel. What was the load of my receptacle panel, gentlemen? Um, my receptacle panel. Uh, I have a load on my receptacle panel, Adam. My load happened to be 32.3, say 33. Can you guys see it right here? 32,398 uh, volt amp. I'm going to make it 33, shall we? Can you guys see it here? 
33 kVA. Okay, let's go grab a load. Same thing, L, attach it to the mechanical panel. I want to call this one uh, RP, my receptacle panel. And I'm going to attach a load, double click on it, and call it, what did they say, 33K? 33K and exit. I have attached the KVA load for the receptacle panel and the lighting panel. Very easy. And named them RP and LP. Now we're doing it this way this time, guys. Next project, we're going to be do, we're going to be using something called schedules. I don't want you to build a schedule in this. The way uh, Adam at Mishad, if you see him doing it, they do it differently. They have schedules. They add a schedule. We will do that one next time. This is the easier way of doing it. Since you guys have never been introduced to this, you lump some of the load as one big chunk of load for, for the analysis. Okay, so we have 33 kVA of receptacle load and 69 kVA of lighting load. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that one. Okay, now I want you guys to zoom into um, the mechanical panel. Expand the mechanical panel. I need to add a few things to the mechanical panel right here. Make sure it's expanded. Now, if you guys remember, what was fed directly from the panel, the mechanical panel too? Anybody remember? There were condensing unit, two condensing unit, and air handling unit fed directly from the main panel. Directly from the main panel. Did you guys hear me? Directly from the main panel, there were a condensing unit, one condensing, two condensing unit, and mechanical panel. So how do I know? You guys want to go into... Uh, right here if you look at um uh here you go so service uh, from the main panel lighting panel receptacle panel, air handling unit condenser and i have a boiler pump one and boiler pump two actually i want to go put these systems guys directly i put put these system directly into the um i already did these two right i already did these two i need to put these air handling unit condensing unit one and two directly into and boiler one and boiler two okay so let's go do that so i need a motor can you guys see where it says uh what, what do we have a synchronous um um can you guys see where it says a motor here induction motor um well we can uh, we have a vfd let's go let's go start with a cable first let's take a cable grab a cable Put your cable in, and uh, the air handling unit has a VFD. Let's grab, uh, I did not want to use VFD, but since you mentioned it, let's grab a VFD here. Here's my VFD, uh, and drag the VFD in so it attached to the cable, and grab a motor. Can you guys see where it says M, um, induction motor? Induction motor, and attach this induction motor to the cable. Gentlemen, and you can adjust them slightly so you can uh, spread them. You have, can you guys see that? Now you have a branch. I'm gonna call this one air handling unit. Air handling unit, name it air handling unit. I'm gonna call the VFD, VFD dash air handling unit. I'm gonna call the cable CP uh, dash air handling unit. Now here's the branch that's going to the air handling unit. Now how easy that? Piece of cake. That's the branch that's going to the air handling unit. Now, um, what what's the horsepower of the air handling unit? 15. Do me a favor. Double click on the icon itself. And where it says horsepower, stick that 15 horsepower, will you? Where it says horsepower, put 15 horsepower. And exit. Okay. Cool. All right, what's next? The next thing we're going to do is the condensing unit, guys. Condensing unit um, is the same as a motor. Can you guys see that motor here? Grab a motor. In the, uh, let's, let's grab a cable first. Cable. Um, drag that cable in here. Here's my cable. I want to go condensing unit. It says we don't have uh, any control over it. Grab a motor. And here's my motor. I'm going to call this one, double click on it, condensing unit dash one. And the cable that going to it, gentlemen, it's called condensing unit dash two. Dash condensing unit dash one. 
I have a convincing unit. You can adjust it, Adam. Look how I'm going to drag it here and adjust it. Now, condensing unit one, condensing unit two. What was the KVA of the condensing unit? Do we have a KVA? Um, okay, double click on it. Change the horsepower into, oh, we don't have, we have to have the KVA. So we did the KVA for it, go, though. Um, let's do the KVA for it. So what was the rated load amps? Okay, so let's take um, 81.6 times 208 times 1.73 equal. Um, I have 29. Anybody came up with something different? 29 KVA? One more time, maybe. Uh, 208 times 1.73 times uh, 81.6, you said? 81.6 equal. I have 29.4 KVA. So why don't you guys go ahead here and make it 29.4 KVA and exit. Cool. Now, see how easy that is? Condensing unit. Now, gentlemen, let us go do condensing unit number two. But before you do anything, Adam, let me introduce you. Do you believe in cloning? You don't have to answer that one. You can believe the fifth. If you believe in cloning or you don't, to use this software, you guys have to believe in cloning because it makes your life easier. Derek, look at what I'm going to do here. Very, very important because it's going to make your life easier. Now, I have another condensing unit, guys. Exactly the same, except the KVA is different, right? Look what I'm going to do, Adam. Watch me. I'm going to go highlight the whole branch here. I'm going to clone this branch. What does clone mean? Clone will give you an identical copy. It's like copy, though it will give you copy, will give you the, the graphic as well as the data that comes with it. So right click on it, gentlemen. Highlight. Did you guys highlight it? Right click on it. Do you see the word clone? Everybody can see the word clone? Okay. Everybody did that clone? Don't move anywhere. Do you see how another identical copy of it came? Hover over it until you see that little cross. Can you guys see the cross? Now hold and drag. Now you're dragging it. Look at that. You're dragging it. Go attach it to the boss. And then drag it again so it can stretch it a little bit. Here's another. See how it labels it? See you too for you? What was the only th the thing different though? Derek, what was the amp on the second one, please? The condensing unit two. What was the amp on that one? Was it uh, there? Should be a rated load amps on that. Condensing unit, the future condensing unit. Uh, forty-four point eight. Forty-four point eight. So let's go do the forty-four point eight, guys. Same thing. So double click on condensing unit number two. Right, right now it's showing twenty-nine. So forty-four point eight times 208 times 1.73 equal i came up with 16.1 so make this one 16.1 and this is your kva for this condensing unit 16.1 any comments any questions on how easy that is do you guys see how easy that is okay now let's clone again what do I need to clone, guys? I have two boiler pumps, boiler pump one and boiler pump two. Derek, what was the well, what was the size of these boiler pump one and two? Is it three horsepower, I think, or something? Both of them are two horsepower. Look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go clone this. Right click on it, clone it, because it's a motor, clone. I'm going to clone it and put it right here. See how clone it. Double click on it change it into change the size into horsepower and uh, i'm going to put two horsepower did you guys do that okay and click out i'm going to go clone it one more time now i have two horsepower now i'm going to name it though before you do i'm going to call this one boiler boiler pump dash one oops boiler pump dash one name it the cable going to it is going to be also uh, dash boiler oops boiler pump dash one. That's the clone, right? I'm going to clone the boiler pump dash one one more time. Right click, clone it. Now it gave me boiler pump dash two, the same size. Are they the same size, uh, Derek? Were they the same size to each? Yeah. 
Yep. So if you click on boiler and it renames it for you. There you go. Boiler pump dash two is two. Now you have boiler pump one and boiler pump two and uh, condensing unit one and two and air handling unit. Any comments, any questions? All the loads that you have coming out of this panel, guys. Okay. Renamed. All of them are named. Um, before I go ahead, can you guys, when you are done, can you give me a thumbs up, Chad? I know you need probably some time to do when, when you have this system built. Now, Adam, I have the lighting panel load account, accounted for, the receptacle panel load accounted for, all the equipment fit from the main panel accounted for, all my loads are accounted for, right? Can you guys see that? The loads are accounted for. Anybody notice something missing when we were clicking? Did you notice that the voltage was zero? Okay, can I, can, I'm going to wait a few seconds, guys, until we tell me that you're right where I am so we can go to the next level. Any comments, any questions? No. Oh, and remember, cabinet unit heaters and everything else, um, Derek, they were where? They were fed from where? From the receptacle panel. So they will be lump sum with the receptacle panel. Do you see what I mean? So we don't worry about it. We, the reason why we put these four loads, because they are the largest loads, right? And because they are fed directly from the mechanical panel. Next, can I have thumbs up, guys, so I can note, go to the next level? Yes. Okay, hold on. Good. So, you riser. Okay, I'll wait for, for your approval to move on to the next. See how easy that is? Now, Brian, if you need another 50 motors, what do you do? Same way, clone. Okay, um, Adam, let me know when you're ready. You good? Okay, thank you. Okay, so Okay, now um, zoom, please go all the way up to the utility. Now we're going to start. Now what you, what you guys have done is you build the system. Now we're going to input data into the system, which you have been doing. I want to start with the utility right here. Double click on the utility icon. You're going to you're going to see the following. You guys see the voltage here and, and what's not. Do me a favor. Do you see three phase value here? Three phase um, MVA. Can you change this one into amps and put 62,000, one, two, three, 62,000, and right underneath it, 31,000. Okay, now where did I get these numbers, Chad? The utility guys will allow certain amount of short circuit coming to your building. These numbers, Adam, you will pick up the phone Make sure you call Brian, he works for Excel Energy, and you tell him, Brian, my building is in downtown Minneapolis, give him the address. Could you please give me the available short circuit at the terminals 
the line side of my bill, line side of my overcut picture device, they will give you these numbers. Did you guys hear me? These two numbers are given typically from the electrical utilities. That's the short circuit available. If you don't have them, we were looking at this short circuit calculation, guys, from your book. I got this one for a transformer, 225 amp, 225 kVA. So if you don't have them, you go to a, a table, you have this table in your book. We were looking at it yesterday. The transformer that I need, I picked a transformer, 225 kVA. Why? Because 225 kVA give me 625 amp and I need 500. That's the closest to what I need. From this table, guys, it give me 62,000 amp right here for the three phase. The line to ground, typically half of that, if you don't, unless you know it, okay? Can I have thumbs up, Chad, that we fully understand that this is where we get it from? We get it from this, this area, okay. Um, can you guys see where it says the voltage, base rated uh, voltage? Can you guys see that right here at the bottom? What's the voltage of the system that we have? 208, so go 208. The voltage that we are having is 208. So we put the short circuit values here, and we put the voltage, and then X the bottom. X it. Didn't pick up. Okay. 208. Now, um... Okay, so now do me a favor, go to the um, mechanical uh, main panel. Let's take the main panel, click on the main panel. Can you change the voltage on the main panel? Can you guys see that? Ch change it to 208, it says zero right now, main panel, 208. I think it should carry all, all through, but I'm not sure now. Yep, it carried it all the way. So if you guys went to the main panel, or probably it will carry the voltage, 208, yep. And um, this one is, this is a 208, yep. Okay, so go to the main panel, double click on it, and put the voltage 208. It will connect the whole system to 208, unless you have a transformer. Okay, so do me a favor. Let's go check and see if the receptacle panel load is 208. Click on the lighting panel. It says 208. Can you guys see that? Everybody checked? Can you do me one more check? Can you guys go to boiler, boiler pump number two, check the voltage on it? Does it say 208? So, Matt, by putting one bus as 208, it changes everything connected to that bus to what? 208. Unless you have a transformer, which we don't have transformer. Okay, we're good. Now, the voltage is 208. The short circuit is given, guys. Um, now, the generator. What was the size of your generator, Adam? Do you remember? Is it 225? Can somebody, or is it 200? Can you check that one for me? Go double click on the generator, will you? Double click on the generator, and Adam is going to give us the size of his KVA, of his generator. I think it's 200 or 225. Anybody else have a generator open, the software that we did? Karen, what's the size of your gen? So. Why don't you guys go ahead and to KW, change this one to KW. Are you working it here? No? Okay. Change it to KW, and, and we'll see what we came up. I believe it's 200. I want to put 200 until you find something. Well, you guys will have to go find your generator and put the, the KV on it, shall we? On the report. On the on the one seventy five. On the on the size itself, you see what you're looking for. 
I'm not genius physically when I move here. Um, this is the steps. You see, you need the board. Um, go back to the back, go to the board. And in good case, it's 200 kilos. Okay, yeah. Let's choose the 200. 200 kilos. Let's choose the 200. I know you guys, different people came on different. It doesn't matter now. Um, I want to go put a 200 here. 200 kW. Okay. When you're done, exit out of it. Here's my generator. Here's my generator. Uh, okay, to it. Okay, we put the generator. Uh, what's the voltage in that one? To it. Everybody put the generator. The second thing we need to do, guys, is cables. The size of the cable. We're going to size the cables between them, right? We're going to size these cables. So for sizing the cables, I'm going to go to the riser that you guys have done or should have done. Here's the size that I'm going to be putting in the system. Um, for the 500 panel, I'm using PVC. Can you guys see that? PVC schedule 80. Two sets of 550 KCM. Two sets of 550 KCM. Okay, um, and then um, I'm using number three for the hundred and number uh, three out for the two hundred. Everybody can see where we got these these numbers. So we're gonna do 250, 250 kVA. Um, it's coming underground, so it's a uh, uh, PVC. Everybody can see what we're doing. Let's go. PVC schedule 80, 252 runs. You guys, if your riser is different, then put what you have. So I'm, I'm trying to get this one here. Cool. All right, so do me a favor. Coming from, start with this cable right here. Can you guys see that cable? They're coming to the meter. Uh, MC, double click on this. When you double click on it, gentlemen, you can see, this is how you put the information about your cable. Do you see any information here about the cable? Nothing. Everybody can see that? Can, do you see where it says library? Everybody can see where it says library? Click on the library. Gentlemen, it will open a huge library of cables for you. So I want to bring to your attention, guys, it says low voltage. I want to go to the following. So there's a lot of them. So you need to know which one you're going to go. Can you guys see it? table 310.16? Copper, magnetic. Uh, go all the way to 310.16. Copper, non-magnetic, uh, THHW, because I need, I need it to be THHWN. And I need, uh, this guy is going to be for um, four conductors, um, four single conductors plus four three cable. Okay, this one. So I, can you guys see it? A 310.16 cover, non-magnetic, PVC, THWN, conduit, four single conductor plus a ground. Uh, let's just use this one. I know there will not be a ground there, but that's the one I'm going to be using for all. Shall we? Everybody can see that? Make sure, make sure it's 316 copper, non-magnetic, PVC, THWN, conduit, four conductors, four single conductor plus ground. Everybody got that? Double click on it. Double click. When you double click on it, guys, it will... Um, it will get you back into all the sizes. Can you guys, you loaded the family. Now, click under size. What was the size that we talked about, Adam? It was 250. Can you guys see where it says the size is 250? How long? Do you guys remember that's coming from the transformer into the CT cabinet? Let's just say it was between, it will allow termination, six feet termination both sides. So that will give you 12. And a distance probably if you go look at measure, it's going to be, say, uh, 20 feet. So roughly 30 feet. 30 feet. So this is a 30 foot of the, between the CT cabinet and, um, and the transformer. Between termination and plugging and what's not, let's say 30 feet. I want to bring to attention, guys, we paralleled. So can you guys see where it says two sets here? How many? Two. So that will give you 250 KCM, two sets, 30 feet, PVC, THW, 600 volt. Can you have thumbs up, guys, when you're ready with that? You're good to go. That's your cable. Cool. X out of it. Now, do me a favor. 
click on it one more time. Make sure the information is there because we're going to use this information. Everybody's there? Brian, Karen, everybody's information is there? Okay. Now, now instead of doing the same thing, Adam, going to every cable and dumping the information about it, do you guys agree with me the following? Do you guys agree with me that this cable, this cable, and this cable, and this cable were the same size? If you look at your riser, they're all the same size, right? The cable coming from Excel to the CT cabinet, from CT cabinet to the auto transfer switch, from the auto transfer switch <coughs> to the panel, as well from the generator into the panel, all these cables are the same size. We size them the same. Now, here's where I'm going to make it easier for you guys. Do me a favor. Click on right. Cl click on the cable that you just inputted the information for. Right click on it. Do you see what it says copy data, Adam? Do you see the term copy data? What this allow you to do, uh, Karen, is copy the data that you put in this cable and dump it in another cable without, without doing a whole lot of work. So can you guys click copy data? Okay, now we copy the data. I'm going to go to the generator cable, click on it, right click, and do you see what it says paste data? Done. Go to the utility cable, click on it, right click, paste data. Go to um, uh, to the one going from the transfer switch here, uh, all the way to the panel, right click, and paste data. Gentlemen, if you double click on, on any one of them, now you're going to find the same information have been copied into all these cables. Done. Any comments, guys, any questions? Any comments, any questions? Now, I know, um, I know, guys, the cable that, so all these cables are in. All these cables are in. Any comments, guys, about these cables? Derek, did it work for you? Karen, worked? Matt? Okay. Now, I would like you guys to go to the one that's going to the MP, this cable. Double click on this. Do you guys remember? You're going to see. But the problem with this cable, Adam, that was above ground. It was not PVC. It was EMT. So I'm going to go change this type of cable. So go to the library. Click on the library. Now, I would like you guys to go all the way to magnetic and THHN because it's in ground. Magnetic THHN, um, right, this one here. It says copper, magnetic, not PVC. PVC is the insulation, but magnetic is the conduit. THHN conduit for single conductor with a ground. Everybody can see that. Why did I change this one to uh, magnetic? Magnetic, guys, is the conduit. If it's, if, it's, if it's metallic, they call it magnetic. If it's non-metallic, they call it non-magnetic. Don't worry about the PVC. The PVC is the insulation of a conductor. Everybody got that? Can I have thumbs up, Chad? You picked the right cable because we're going to use it everywhere else. There are four conductors, four, four single conductor plus ground. That's what we're going to pull. Double click on it. Okay, then exit. If it doesn't take you there, just see where that X exit. Now, can you just see that it changes my insulation? The size is still the same, though. The size still the same, 250, 230 feet. I'm using 30 feet between all of them, so that's not bad assumption. 30 feet um, to the panel, okay? Now let's go, guys, to the from the generator. Click on the generator cable, will you? The generator cable, because the generator is going all the way to the AT end. This is probably 50 feet. Put 50 feet for this generator. The length, the size is still the same. The length is 50 feet. Okay. Now go back into the cable that's going to the panel. Double click on it. Before you, before we do anything, I would like you guys to assure me, because I'm going to use this cable everywhere else. Assure me that you're using, it says cover, magnetic, PVC insulation, THHN 600, and 4-1-C plus ground. Okay? Because I'm going to copy it. Cool? Don't worry about the size. The size, that's the right size, but size will change it. So, Karen, I'm going to go copy, since this cable is going to be indoor, THHN, EMT conduit, all these wiring methods here, I'm going to be copying it to the same type of cable. Okay, so, look what I'm going to have it. Right-click on it, uh, copy data. 
Look, let me show you guys an easier way to copy data. You can hold, be very careful though, hold the control and click cable one, cable two, cable three, oops, cable three, now I screw it up. That's what we're gonna be careful. If you screw up and you pick other things, just get out of it. One more time. Uh, right click, make sure you copy the uh, copy data, hold control, and then click on all the cables when you're holding the control. Um, now I picked all my cables, gentlemen, right? Right click on them and clone and paste data. Now I have just put the same type of cable in every one of these loads. Did you guys see what I did? Now, obviously, the distance is going to be slightly different. The size is going to be different, right? So after you copy it, go to the lighting panel. Click on the lighting panel. The lighting panel right now is, is showing 30 feet. Make it 20 feet. And the size for the lighting panel, guys, was a 3 aught. Here's my 3 aught. The size of single conductor. Change this one to a single conductor. Okay, see what I did? I changed it to 3 aught single conductor, 20 feet for the lighting panel. And exit. Let's go to the receptacle panel cable. Click on the receptacle panel. The receptacle panel, what was the size of the receptacle panel? Was it number uh, three? I can't remember. The receptacle panel, number three. Okay. So I'm going to go right here, guys, the receptacle panel. Make sure I don't have number three, so use number, uh, um, let's use number two. Uh, I don't have number three, so click number two. I have only one conductor, though. And make it uh, 20 feet, too. 20 feet. Uh, let's go to the air handling unit. Double click on the air handling unit. Oh, now, how did we size the air handling unit, guys? Uh, Adam, let's go to, now these guys, we need to go, I'm going to go check what the, what Adam sized for them from the mechanical schedule. Remember, we have a mechanical schedule that we sized it. So, Adam, I'm going to go, everybody change these two panels first before I move to the uh, the lighting, uh, the lighting, uh, the lighting was um, number three out, three out, one conductor. Don't forget to do one conductor at 20 feet. Now for the air handling unit, let me see if Adam, uh, I'm going to your rabbit. So that's how you guys can. Uh, where's your mechanical? Did you drop your mechanical equipment? Here's mechanical equipment. <laughs> Let's go to Adam's. Um, if you guys did this schedule, you should have this information right here. From, Here's my uh, air handling unit. I'm going to go directly into the size of the conductor. There you go. So Adam have size, the air handling unit, can you guys see that, is number six. And an overcome protection device, 125. I assume this is, I think we looked at it, you and I. So number six. Everybody can see that? Number six. Three conductors, number six. Um, okay, so I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go to the air handling unit. Air handling unit, double click on it. I'm going to go... I see four conductors here, guys, right? It's, it should be three conductors. Technically, you should go change the library to three conductors. We do, they do. Um, well, why don't we do that? Because all of them. Let's go change the library. Click on library. Can you guys see that? Let's go to three conductors plus ground. Three conductors plus ground. Where is it? Right here. Can you guys see that? It's three single conductor plus ground. Everybody can see that? Oh, THW, we need THHN. Uh, there you go, right here. So, copper, magnetic, PVC, THHN, conduit, three, no, three single conductor plus ground, Chad. Where did it go? Right here. Three single conductor plus ground, the top one, the first one. Everybody can see that? Why three? Because I have no neutral for these. Double click on it, gentlemen. Exit. Now you got the right type of cable. Uh, the size, what did we size, Adam? Uh, did we say number six or number eight? Number six, how many of them? One, one run. And what was the length? It's, if you guys remember, the air handling unit is right there with the main panel. So 30 feet is not far, far away. So maybe actually, well, I don't know. Um, maybe we should be 20 feet. So you measure the distance, 20 feet, 30 feet is, is what you're going to be doing. Okay. So that's for my, <clears throat> now that's for my air handling unit. The boiler pumps, guys, instead of, look what happened, instead of changing the boiler pumps um, and the two condensing units, the two condensing units are outside, so they will be PVC. <clears throat> the boiler pump, so look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go clone, copy, no, click on the uh, air handling unit, copy 
data from this cable, go to the second two cables, the boiler. Can you see that? Highlight the two boilers, right click on them, and paste the data. I picked this because <clears throat> the two boiler pumps, guys, are going to be <clears throat> they're going to be the same size and the same type, three conductor plus ground. So let me go see, make sure uh, what did Adam do for these? Adam, what did you do for the air hand, for the pumps? Um, okay, I remember boiler pump one and two. Um, boiler pump one and two looks like. Uh, Number 12, they're, they're small, number 12, can you guys see that? They're number 12, so let's go, uh, gentlemen, to boiler pump number one, uh, make it a 12-er, 12 conductor number 12. Uh, where are they located? They're right in the area, so put 30 feet for that baby. Number 12, 30 feet, um, and boiler pump number two, uh, put same thing, 12 conductor, 30 feet. Is boiler pump one and two. Any comments, guys? Any questions? We did boiler pump one, but we did boiler pump two. That should be from your mechanical schedule that you guys um, should have done. It makes it easier. Let's go to the chiller. Uh, condensing unit. Adam, <clears throat> I'm going to go see what Adam did for his condensing unit first. Um, uh, condensing unit. Um, here's my condensing unit number one and number two, the second two. So help me here, guys, uh, keep them in track here. Um, I have number three. They can't be number three, Adam, both of them. One of them should be smaller. So these are wrong here. Number three. So the conductor, one of them should be number three. <clears throat> uh, number three, the other one should be smaller. Okay, so let's go to the condensing unit number one. <clears throat> uh, right now, guys, is showing uh, the conduct. Uh, click on the library. Click on library. Um, I need, they're outside, so I need non magnetic. Can you guys see that? Go all the way to three conductors uh, with a ground right here. Can you guys see that? Copper, non magnetic, PVC, THWN. Conduit, three, single conductor with a ground. Why? Because they are outside. We need PVC with them. And we need the insulation to be THWN. Everybody can see that? That's for the condensing unit. Click on this. Close it. Now, the size of the conductor here is was number three. I'm going to use number two because I don't have number three. Um, I'm going to use number one. And uh, put 40 feet length. They're outside, 40 feet length for these. And exit. Um, same thing, guys. Clone, copy the copy the data that you did for condensing unit number one. Copy it. Go to condensing unit number two and paste it. And condensing unit number two um, should be um, based on the weighted load M. Uh, for this unit, uh, future for this unit, uh, it should be 50. So 50 amp, number six. It should be number six. So double click on uh, uh, condensing unit number two, guys, and grab number six, will you? Number six. And let leave the length 40, number six, and exit. Gentlemen, you have just inputted all the information on the feeders. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Comments? Questions? Cool. Now, do me a favor. Before you do anything else, go save. Can you guys see where it says save? When you hit save, did it tell you that uh, it brings a, uh, a riser? It shouldn't do it for you. Uh, do you guys see that one? Do you see what I saw? Type main here. This is my main riser. Type main and accept the location. Just type main and hit yes. It will save your riser as a main. I'll show you where it saves it. Okay. 
Now the moment of truth, gentlemen, we're ready to run the short circuit. <laughs> if you did everything right, when you run the short circuit, you should have some data now. Did you guys put all the information? Okay, ready to run your short circuit? Now, after you build all this information, guys, I think we build all of them. I'm gonna go run my short circuit calculation and my arc flash. Shall we? Are you guys ready? Yes, no? Okay, so Adam, come run here, click on run, run here, balance studies. When you run balance studies, please hit on demand and load flow and short circuit. These three, we don't want sizing. Demand load, load flow, and short circuit. Short circuit, guys, will give you the short circuit available inside your building. Load flow will get you the voltage drop inside every feeder. And demand load will also size your voltage drop and give you how much current is going through every feeder. Okay? Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We picked it up. Now, the moment of truth, if you did everything is right, it's going to say complete done. Otherwise, it will say you have fatal errors or errors. Fatal errors, it will tell you where the fatal errors, you go fix them. So I want you guys to be honest and tell me when you hit the run if you got fatal errors. I don't know if I will get fatal errors. Shall we go run? See that run? Run it. Okay. There you go. Did you guys, anybody got fatal errors? One fatal error. Well, yeah, I got a, warning. a warning? I got a, a warning. Any, got three warnings? Okay. So if a warning is okay, a fatal error, oops, you know, you made something you missed like a feeder size or what's not. Fatal errors is okay. Edit, let's go edit errors. Can you see what it says, edit errors? When you edit the error, take you directly to the error. It's actually, you guys see where, where it talks about the VFD size? All of us got it. Um, it needs to know what the VFD size, um, what was the, the horsepower on that VFD 15? Let's put, Oh, let's put a 15 kW. Make a 15 kW. Yep. Yeah, it just match it. 15 k. No, just leave it. Actually, you can. Okay, make it 15 horsepower. Change it to 15 horsepower and make it 50. Cool. Exit out of it and rerun. Run calculation again. Uh, studies. All of them are clicked. So run and see if we can. There you go. All your calculation is run. <laughs> Anybody got a fatal errors or, or or now your short circuit calculation gentlemen is wrong. Done. Cool. See how easy now garbage in, garbage out. If you made mistakes in the feeders, I expect you guys to go back there and check your feeders like we did. Make sure it's the right feeders and what's not. The last thing I want to show you guys is arc flash. Let's go now. We run the calculation. Save. Make sure you save, will you? Save. Every time you run, save. Um, let's go run again. Can you guys see a run here? Can you see uh, Karen where it says um, arc flash evaluation? Now we run the short circuit. Everybody can see arc flash evaluation. Click on arc flash evaluation. It will tell you, okay, do you want to run it based on NFPA 70E 2012? This is your default, an ANSI, uh, an IEEE 1584. Yep, take this as a default. Don't. Uh, we're going to run it um, um, based on all the default metric. Um, you can change it to English. Let's do the metric now. And then um, take all your default and hit OK. And here's your arc flash calculation. OK. Close that one error. No errors. Everybody got, got this one? OK. Now, let's go to the, when you go there, can you guys click on customer labels? Can you guys say customer labels here? Customer labels and preview. Can you just see that? Click on all these labels that you can get and continue. Gentlemen, here's the labels for the the arc flash labels for this system. Okay, look at this. All of them are warning. <laughs> We're running a short circuit without overcompetition devices. That's why we have all these warning guys. We don't have a circuit pickers yet, do we? So it says, do not touch any of these. It's going to explode right into your face. Um, that's what the warning. No safe um, uh, PPE exists. Anybody knows why? The reason right now, because we did not install circuit breakers yet. We have not installed circuit breakers yet. But we ran the short circuit, the arc flash. So I want to exit out of this gentleman. 
exit out of it again exit out of this now you have done you ran guys short circuit you ran load flow you ran our flash okay now where do you find all this information where do you find it when you so you can print it now i want to remind you guys um you're going to be printing the following for your friend chad right here can you guys see that you're going to be printing the one line diagram you're looking at it uh, short circuit report, input report, load flow report, and coordination. Don't talk about the coordination. Coordination, I'm going to do it tomorrow, guys. I will do the coordination tomorrow. That's the next session, how to do coordination tomorrow. Arc flash labels. How do you print arc flash labels? Remember that label that I showed you? Hit print, and it will print it to PDF or print it to yours. Right now, guys, you should be able to... You can yeah, you absolutely. That's what you're going to put in the file. Right now, you guys should be able to print, not now, all these files I highlight in, in, uh, in uh, yellow. The coordination curves, I'm going to walk you guys through this tomorrow. That's the next step, coordination curves. Okay, now where do you find these reports to print them? Shall we? Where do you find them to print them? Okay, minimize. Let's, Adam, we'll start with the riser. Here's your riser. So can you guys see here, print view? Here's your riser. If you hit print, gotcha. Can you? I'm, I'm going there in a second. So when you uh, uh, to get back, uh, exit. There is a couple of X here. Not there. Yep. Got it. Okay. Now, if you want to go print it, guys, the riser. Make sure you're in the riser. Click on this, and then when you hit print, it will tell you what type. Make sure you put the 11 by 17. Adjust this one to 11 by 17, and what's not, and print it as 11 by 17. That's how you print your riser. Don't print it yet. Now, how do you? Where do you find your reports, Adam? All the reports, guys, are right here. Can you guys see that little icon at the top? You see where it says reports right here. Everybody can see that. Let's go click there and see what type of reports we have. Click here. Okay. Now you're going to see text reports. Yep. Click on text reports, gentlemen. Here's all the reports that I would like you guys to print here. Can you guys see them? Here's the demand load. Here's the input. Everything that you put in this software is, will be printed, guys. Here's the load flow. Um, here's the short circuit. Short circuit, load flow, input, and demand. I want to go open the short circuit, shall we? So if you double click on the first short circuit, here's the report that you guys will be printing. Can you guys see that? If you go all the way to the bottom, madam. Oops. Um, all the way to the bottom. It will tell you what the short circuit uh, in, in your buses are. Okay, I thought we did. Fault report. This is a text report, right? Yep, text report. <clears throat> Fault report analysis. Why don't I have? Fault analysis. Uh, bus voltage. Fault analysis report completed. So that's the report that we're going to do. Where's my summary? You sneaky. There you go. So voltage. I don't see my summary here. I don't know why I can't see my summary. Right here. So lighting panel will have uh, looks like like seventeen thousand volt. Can you guys see that? Uh, um, if you're looking at the meter center or um, termination box, you're looking at forty-four, almost forty-five thousand. Here's all the information. The most important thing about the short circuit is right here, guys. I wouldn't take it yet until we... So when you go print now, you're going to go print it. And it should be able to um, to print all your information. You should. I think you should. <laughs> so sometimes in the past, they were not allow us to print from it, guys. But we should be able to... I don't know why it's not showing everything, but... Um... Yep, yep, you can print to Qt PDF and save it as a PDF. Not now. Exit out of it. You want to look at another report, guys. Click here. Let's go to text. Let's go to the load uh, input. Here's the input information that we put. All these are input information. Um, print again. There we go. Here's all the information that we did on this report. Eight pages. Cool. Exit out of them. Exit out of them, it takes you back to the riser. Take you back to the riser. 
So what we did today, guys, you build the riser, you ran short circuit analysis, you ran arc flash, you know where the reports are located. So what I would like you guys to go there, now is make sure your numbers match what you designed for, your numbers match what you designed for, um, that you put here. And tomorrow, I will walk you through the arc flash. I don't want, not arc flash, the coordination. I'll walk you through the coordination. We don't want to do the coordination today because I need another good time to do the coordination. I think that's good enough. Any comments, guys, any questions? Any comments, any questions? Garbage in, garbage out. You guys know how to use the software now to interpret the information. It really, that will give you the available short circuit in every panel. That's what you need to know. And it will give you the arc flash. You can put a label. Can you guys see the arc flash label there? Put a label for your panels. But to do the arc flash label, we need to put over competition device yet. So we'll do that tomorrow. We'll put over competition device and do coordination. Any comments, guys? Any questions? You want to go back to your arc flash, guys? I don't know if you that's what you were saying. To print the arc flash, you're going to go run, go to the arc flash report, run, OK it, run, then go to labels, uh, preview. They're all clicked, continue, and here's the label. So print. And off it goes. That will get you the print of all your labels that you want. Preview it, continue, and um, and here's the labels that you can print. And you will be printing these for our flash. Okay. Okay. So that's basically all what I have for you guys. Exit. Go back. Any comments? Any questions? So that will give you enough. <clears throat> like I said, tomorrow after my first, I'm going to go over one one uh, more chapter and then we'll go over uh, the coordination coordination is that enough is that an easy software to use derek what do you think yeah i'm just trying to find a spot that i like if you're going to save it under one of the files in the ah where can we save that under go uh power system analysis go to your network it says power system analysis yeah put it right there all your reports pdf and put them in power system analysis I will wait though because it will change. The data will change when yeah, we. That, that yeah, that would not change. Yes, sir. Yes, she is. Thank you. I love you. Don't tell my wife that. Oops. <laughs> you want to save me today? <clears throat> okay. Thank you, guys. That's all I have. Did it work for you, Derek? Yeah, did it work? I gotta say, I remember some of that because I did some of the reports and everything. So it. Yeah, so that's. I, I